Okay, uh, hi everybody. Hope you can uh, hear me all right. Um, I'm Dave Cook, as I've Again, I'm with the Mercer Island Radio Operators Group. And uh, we're sort of, uh, this is going to be a short presentation. We just sort of uh, hop in on this uh, event uh, uh, at the tail end here, so we haven't really put together a very formal presentation for you here. But what we're going to, what I'm going to talk about today is uh, sort of the evolution of our uh, emergency communication system that we're, we're, we've been working on in Mercer Island for the last several years. And uh, where we are right now is we finally settled on using Winlink as our messaging system, uh, digital me mes messaging system. Um, we are uh, actually not a club, we're, we're sponsored by the uh, Department of uh, Emergency Preparedness uh, for Mercer Island. Uh, so uh, we don't get that much fun. <laughs> um, uh, what we have for facilities on the island right now is we have uh, uh, VHF and UHF repeater in the center of the island, and we also have a, uh, a cross band 440 uh, repeater on the south end. And what we wanted to do, and we also have a, uh, a, uh, a radio room set up down at the um, city hall uh, at the EOC. And what we've done over the last many years is uh, uh, done exercises uh, once or twice a year for uh, practicing message traffic handling uh, using the traditional voice um, uh, methods and uh, you know, you know your wonderful air or radi radiograms. And we just found that they were so cumbersome, they were really hard for our uh, members to, uh, to use in a practical situation. So we're looking for some way to supplement that with uh, possibly digital mechanisms that might be easier for people to, uh, to operate. And pardon me, I just got these slides from one of our members, so I'm going to have to use some notes here. Um, um, obviously our goal is uh, uh, to provide the messaging, uh, particularly in emergency situations across the nation. One of our biggest considerations that we have is uh, uh, we're a fairly low budget group of, of hams and we do have support from the, uh, the city government but they don't really have much of a budget either to support us so whatever we came up with had to be done on a very low budget for us. Um, we also needed something that was easy for our, our members to uh, learn and uh, to maintain on their own without uh, a lot of complications. Um, and again, and, and finally, uh, a system that would be stable and uh, relatively robust in an emergency situation, you know, it's, it doesn't take much for the whole, uh, whole communication system to uh, sort of fall apart. So that's how we settled on Winlink. We, we looked at a number of uh, Um, anyway, so we looked at we looked over the, over the last several years at the number of systems, uh, ranging from uh, uh, things like uh, I guess just basically bulletin board systems and uh, uh, things like mailboxes, uh, just simple um, uh, TNC chat. Um, those were just too difficult to, to handle. We looked at uh, some other. Options here, uh, NOS and JNOS, uh, they were just complicated to maintain. And then finally, some other various things that other people have been looking at, and they just weren't, uh, again, they were too complicated to, to manage and maintain for all of our members. Um, so, what we finally settled on was Winlink. 
Uh, we found the WinLink is uh, somewhat complicated to set up, but once you get it set up, it works very reliably and it's very well supported, which is the primary thing that we need now. Uh, we don't want to be stuck with a system that nobody is maintaining and will become obsolete in a few years. Uh, we think WinLink is here to stay. It may not be the most optimal um, solution, as uh, has been mentioned uh, a few times uh, during the day today, but it works for us and it's uh, very uh, well within our budgetary means. Uh, and I think I just answered my question there. Um, one of the things about WinLink that uh, we like was that uh, it uses Look um, is that it uses a uh, simple email. It's, it's basically based on sending email traffic. Uh, and uh, it uses, uh, in, in our case, uses a Windows soft email software, which is either Outlook Express or Outlook. Uh, I might mention that Outlook Express is free. It comes with all the you know, versions of, of Windows. Uh, however, a lot of Windows users are using Office, which uh, contains Outlook uh, as an email client, so uh, it works with either of those. Um, it uh, combines the benefits of internet and radio. What that means is that if you've got an internet connection, you can use the, it, it will use that preferentially over uh, the radio link, however, if your, if your internet connection fails, uh, it, will, it will fail over to using the radio uh, link if you have one. Um, it is well supported and used, as I mentioned. Uh, currently, there are 600 Telpak radio entry points, and uh, we'll get into some of the mechanics of the components of, of the Winlink system and what a Telpak node is uh, in a few slides. Um, and 130,000 messages per month. Uh, I don't know how old this slide deck is. It's probably more than that. Um, I will also mention that we put this slide uh, deck together primarily for educating our own um, sponsors uh, in, in uh, the city government. So uh, there's, this will be a little bit simplified, and when we get to the Q and A session, you know, feel free to ask about more details. But at this level, it's going to be a pretty high level. Just. Uh, picture of how WinLink serves our emergency communications needs. Uh, so here we have our normal uh, operation where uh, perhaps we've got someone uh, down at the uh, down at the fire station or maybe down at the city hall and this person at the fire station or wherever uh, communicating normally um, until all of a sudden, boom, uh, we have a internet failure. So, uh, yeah. What happened? Uh, uh, you know, witness uh, the December windstorm. Uh, that was a great example of one of these failures. Um, uh, I'm not sure. I, pardon me. I'm not too familiar with these slides, but. I think basically what's happening here is this is depicting the fact that uh, this this user over here is able to actually compose and queue up a message for sending even though the, the internet is down. Uh, so as far as she is concerned, the message has been um, has been delivered. But of course, what's really going on is Mr. Ham Radio here is steps into the picture um, using the WinLink uh, software on this system uh, here at, uh, let's say, the EOC, uh, is able to transmit that using the WinLink protocol over to the radio at, say, the fire station. And as far as, the, as, far as these two users are concerned, it's completely transparent. Um, in our case, we have um, VHS, VHF uh, 
um, had a wind link uh, support of, at our fire stations, uh, at our EOC. We have mobile units and we also have access to neighboring uh, communities. Uh, we could do the paperwork? In our wind link sort of network. Um, we intend to grow this uh, eventually to provide uh, more long haul uh, capability uh, via HF uh, and satellite, uh, which uh, we are in the process of setting up a satellite system, a system right now. Uh, okay, so now we're going to talk about the pieces of, uh, of, of what's involved in WinLink. Uh, basically, there's, there's three types of system uh, software installations involved. PackLink is the end user link you may think of as uh, uh, any user that wants to uh, uh, connect, uh, get a message across or receive messages. Uh, all this requires is uh, an email program, the PackLink software, uh, TNC, and a radio. Um, as I mentioned before, it pulls multiple paths. So it'll use the internet if it can, oh, and it will use the radio, the radio if the internet is not available. Uh, here's a typical uh, block diagram of the, of the system. Uh, we're pretty much using the AGW packet engine, which has been mentioned earlier as our uh, uh, packet software uh, interfacing with our TNC. Uh, the PackLink uh, application sits on top of that, and it it does all the communication with the email client as if uh, as if it were talking to a real uh, internet email provider here. So it does all the routing between the actual internet or the radio as required. Uh, the components for us, as I mentioned, we're sort of on a budget. Um, we're looking for the, the simplest to assemble system as well as a reasonable price system. So um, as you, you can see, uh, these components are free. This can be free if you're using Outlook Express or if you already have Outlook, um, this would be available to you at no cost. Uh, you've seen this TNCX in some of the earlier slides. Uh, those are a really inexpensive 1200 baht um, uh, TNC and uh, at $75, that's quite a good deal. Uh, it's a kit, and uh, so it's fun to build, too. Um, we've also been looking into uh, other radios uh, uh, in, to use as dedicated radios for this purpose. Uh, the one that um, uh, was mentioned earlier is uh, Fox still have, or uh, you were, we were talking about the German radio earlier. Uh, yeah, and I understand those aren't being manufactured anymore. Right? Yeah, yeah. So we, we were planning on using those, but what we uh, found instead is there's another a company, uh, a U.S.-based company called uh, TEKK, T -E -K -K, that manufactures a radio called an SDU-2000. And it's, uh, it's only 5 watts, but it is a, a UHF, a dual-band radio. And so we're looking into buying uh, some of those in quantities. Uh, you heard Bob mention earlier that uh, we also uh, just recently placed an order for five of the, uh, uh, the multi, uh, TNC multi uh, TNCs. Uh, and we got a real good deal on those. I've actually got two of those, uh, uh, got dibs on two of those myself. So between those um, and uh, uh, these little tech radios. We're gonna. We're planning on building uh, portable systems that are relatively inexpensive that we can either have available for our members to use, or uh, uh, maybe even place at some of our shelter sites uh, for use during emergencies. Okay. The next. Uh, the next. Component in the uh, in the system here is the Telpac uh, station, and this is a uh, uh, basically a, a bridge between the radio and internet. Um, it um, uh, it basically just routes the packets that it receives using the the uh, Winlink protocol 
uh, out to the internet to um, one three, uh, well, there's three servers out there, and I'll have to refer to my notes again. Um, but there's three, there's three central servers worldwide, uh, two in the US and one in uh, Australia, I believe. Uh, those servers then take those messages and then reroute them into the rest of the, the internet. So they're basically mail gateways uh, translating the, the WinLink protocol into traditional uh, internet uh, uh, SMTP and POP3 type um, internet protocol. Uh, so the Telpac station, uh, its purpose is to get the message uh, from the pack link, from the pack link station, and route it to one of those uh, central WinLink servers. Um, here's a, uh, a map that shows um, uh, the uh, a bunch of the. Uh, Telpac gateways that are available today. Uh, we have several on Mercer Island that you'll be seeing in a, in a later slide. Um, <clears throat> but you can see from this, uh, there's fairly good coverage. I think these are, uh, they don't say whether they're UHF or VHF, but if you hover your mouse over this map, by the way, you can go to winlink.org and find out a lot more information about all of this. Um, in particular, you can go to this mapping utility and just kind of browse around and find out what Felpac stations are in your neighborhood. And there's plenty and growing. Uh, here's an example of what we have on Mercer Island. Uh, this is David Giuliani, WA6PXX. He's actually running three Felpac uh, stations. Uh, he's on the north end of Mercer Island. Uh, I'm running a Telpac station on the south end. When you go to this Telpac Gateway uh, page on, on winlink.org uh, and uh, hover your mouse over the, uh, uh, the particular location that you're interested in and pop up this little balloon that shows you all the information you would ever want to know about that station. Uh, so you can find out the uh, frequency that it's on and the baud rate. You can uh, set up your pack link station to communicate with it. Uh, we've seen this. Okay, the third component in here is a PMBO. Uh, now, I mentioned that there's um, uh, these central servers. There's actually another piece before you get to these central servers, and that's this PMBO. The PMBO acts as a internet mail uh, service provider or as a role of a service, the internet mail service provider. In other words, it performs the function of storing and forwarding messages. The Telpac, as, as we, Telpac station, as we mentioned before, its only job is to route the radio message to some place that it can be then transferred out to the internet or perhaps transferred back to another pac link station. That's what the PMBO does. Um, it supports any number of packing stations and it coordinates with these central message servers that are those three big servers out on the internet. Um, if the internet goes down, which we'll see in a, in a moment here, if this internet goes down, this PMBO can store any messages that it receives uh, and then when the internet comes back up, it will go ahead and forward them. Um, we'll also see what happens in the internal network when the uh, external internet goes down. Note that a pack link station can also talk directly to the PMBO uh, via a telnet link if the internet is up. Uh, this PMBO, as you, as you see, does not have a radio link to it, so it depends on either an internet link via telnet or a radio link through a telnet station. Typically, though, what we're going to find is that if you've got a PMBO, you're running telnet also. Um, this just shows that uh, uh, the PMBO can support all the tel telnet links. Um, here's, here's the typical case where the internet goes down for this fellow who's out in the boonies somewhere, so he's uh, got to rely on his radio link. Uh, he, he, this one can then get his message traffic over here to the PMBO 
and is still communicated out through the internet or to other packets. This is not exactly quite right. Um, this should not be asked out. What we're talking about here is what happens is, well, let me, let me rephrase it. If the internet goes down everywhere, uh, generally this PMDO and this TELPAC station are probably running on the same machine, so they don't really need this connection. In this case, um, this radio, this radio, is that uh, um, if, the, uh, if the internet goes down for everybody, we can still use radio to talk to the telepack and PMDOs, and PMDOs can also go to other packing stations. So basically, you've still got a network for message routing if the internet is completely gone, and that's what our purpose is. Uh, so to review, what we have here is PackLink is the end user station, uh, Telnet is the uh, routing system to the PMDO, and then the PMDO handles all of the message routing, storing, and forwarding. Here's what we've got on Mercer Island. Um, uh, uh, this is David Giuliani, W86PXX, is on the north end, and he's running three telpath uh, stations here and a PMDO. Uh, he has uh, one on UHF, one on VHF, and then this one here is going out uh, through a special, uh, uh, through a Yagi antenna at Port, Port Townsend. The purpose of that, well, we'll get to that in a second. And then uh, I'm also running a, a telepath station on the south, and I'm currently running only uh, on two meters with uh, uh, 1200 baud, but uh, as soon as I get my new uh, TNC, I'll be uh, adding a, uh, a UHF link down here. Uh, now, I am linked to uh, David through the internet at this point, uh, but eventually I'll also become a PMDO so that we'll have coverage from the south end of the island throughout, throughout the south end of the Puget Sound area, and David's uh, PMDO will be able to handle all the needs uh, for the north end of the island, uh, or north end of the Puget Sound. Uh, this is what I was uh, about to mention. Uh, the, two, two, uh, the 220 megahertz link that we provide is actually pro we're providing that as a service to Port Townsend. They don't have um, apparently internet access out there for some reason. So they're actually using WinLink for their normal email needs. Um, so they actually donated a, uh, a, a antenna and a transceiver to, to David. Uh, and use this as a normal email communication system. Uh, I mentioned we also got some mobile setups here. Um, this is uh, this is the ICOM. What is that model? Twenty-eight. Ten. Yeah. Twenty-seven. Ten. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we can operate. Uh, in multiple modes with the two channels that that supports. Uh, so in this case, we use one channel for voice, and the other channel we use for the digital. Uh, this shows a little micro TNC that uh, we've uh, heard people mentioning before. Uh, we also are doing APRS, uh, which is not shown here. Um, I believe the APRS is probably running on the same channel as the voice uh, channel. Or the, or the voice side of the transceiver, and uh, I believe the way it works is that whenever you key the mic, it overrides the APRS system. 
So this provides us with a means of not only having mobile uh, uh, data, you know, emergency communications, both in voice and digital, but also be able to track vehicles as they're uh, traveling around the head. And this shows uh, this shows where the mobile stations uh, are parked at. Um, this is KF7PB. They'll allow us. Uh, this is me, and uh, we also have one other, Don Sandstrom, uh, who's our chairman, uh, is running a, a packing station here, uh, and, but uh, he he's, uh, doesn't run a Telpac or PMBO yet. Uh, anyway, with our three vehicles, we're able to, in emergencies, uh, we have the potential to be able to roam around the island and uh, uh, go to places where we may be needed for uh, handling messages and, and such. Um, oh, <laughs> I don't think I've even seen this slide. So. <laughs> So here's Bill, and he's down at our EOC. This is where our city hall is. Okay, so how do we use this system? Um, this is what Mercer Island looked uh, like on December 16th. <laughs> and uh, so here was our response to that. Um, David's uh, system on the north end of the island, he said, one of the lucky ones that has a, a propane power generator as well as a battery backup uh, to tie him over until his generator kicks in. He was able to um, uh, run on standby power uh, throughout the entire um, power outage. Uh, because he's at the end of the station, we were all able to pass traffic back and forth amongst ourselves, uh, those of us who were able to operate on battery power. Um, I might also mention that our uh, Repeater uh, that the city uh, allows us to uh, 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 run at the city um, uh, communications tower, which is in the center of the island, is also run off the gas generator that powers the the pump for the city water supply. So we had plenty of radio power during the outage the entire time. Um, our problem was, though, that we had no way to communicate with either the EOC by digital or uh, off the island, and that's our big concern, is what happens in an emergency, if we know what's going to happen, is, is we're going to be totally isolated. Um, and, in fact, we, that was why we lost power, because we are an island and one of the main lines got, got cut. So we're looking for solutions for not only uh, better communications within the island, but also off-island as well. Um, one of, a couple of the solutions that we're looking at are um, using uh, 802.11 connections, uh, uh, using higher, higher gain antennas for going across the island to, to the mainland, or possibly satellite lakes, and even possibly uh, HF Pactor. Right now, uh, we're right in the process, and this is why we're buying all these new uh, TNCs, of uh, setting up a new, uh, uh, or, yeah, setting up a new communication center at the EOC. Uh, W7MIR, by the way, is our computer ID. Um, and what we're doing is we're putting in a 900 megahertz um, communication link between David's, David Giuliani's house and the EOC. And this will allow direct communications between the EOC and the PMBO if, yeah, you know, if uh, the internet goes down. So that solves the problem of getting the EOC connected digitally to, to from there, them to here. And then those of us who have uh, telepath capability, we can also talk to the, to the PMBO. Um, and so we will have complete communications capability from the EOC to all the rest of us who have this capability. No, it's actually, well, 
question because <laughs> the question was, where's our repeater? And here it is. Uh, it's basically right in the center of the island at the highest point. Um, the reason it's there is because that's where our city water tank is for the same reason that water likes to be up high. Um, and again, we get our emergency power off the generator that's at the water tower. So our repeaters are uh, pretty, pretty nice, pretty, pretty well maintained. Um, our plan is to add a, uh, a, a bit of electronics. I'm not exactly clear on what this thing is called, but I'm sure some of you folks may know what it is. But it allows us to run basically DigiP uh, packets uh, as well as handle voice. So what will happen is if it hears a packet, it will DigiP it. If it hears voice, it will actually mourn on the repeater. Uh, so that will again allow us with uh, the idea here is to use low power, to be able to use low power um, uh, radio equipment such as that SDU uh, 2000 that I mentioned earlier that's only 5 watts. Uh, that little 5 watt unit should be able to hit this repeater fairly easily from anywhere on the island, uh, allowing us better mobility and our better ability to equip our folks with uh, more portable stations. Um, we haven't mentioned it yet, but the idea is, is that we have a number of, uh, and I think it's on the next slide, we have a number of emergency shelters around the island. Yes, here they are. So these, uh, these are the shelters that we have. And in the uh, event of an emergency, we have uh, several members um, uh, of our group assigned to each one of these shelters. And so the idea is by having a small portable uh, unit, we can position them at each of the shelters, or when we don't have enough uh, resources, we can send the mobile units out for, to cover those shelters. And the shelter serves communication points. We have neighborhood uh, uh, assignments, uh, the emergency preparedness department also uh, coordinates with civilian, the other civilians uh, to handle emergency situations and they know to go to the shelter when there's an emergency because that's where the hands are going to be and if there's any emergency traffic that needs to be passed they know that's where to find us and then we can take care of that for them. Not, the question was, is the public aware of our shelter locations? And no, uh, generally not, but the neighborhood captains, their responsibility is to coordinate with their neighborhoods. And so it's like a neighborhood watch type of a situation where um, the people in the neighborhood should at least know who their neighborhood captain is. And the neighborhood captain should be able to tell them where these emergency shelters are. Um, but we actually have a fairly good program for recruiting the neighborhood uh, people um, and it you know it varies but um, if there was an emergency um, I think we would have pretty good uh, we have pretty good way pretty good methods for getting the news out in fact a lot of the people in my neighborhood um, uh, when the storm hit in December they came to me because they saw my antenna and they said, can you help us? <laughs> because our cell phones aren't working. And I said, well, as a matter of fact, I can't, but I can tell you where your emergency shelter is. <laughs> um, and this is just depicting the fact that uh, we eventually uh, intend to have uh, communications with outside uh, outlying uh, communities as well. Um, we're working. David, I should say, is working uh, with a number of the uh, uh, other uh, uh, communities like, I believe, Bellevue and, and so forth to uh, try to coordinate what we're doing with them. So in worst case conditions, uh, we may not have a link off the island, but we, uh, I mean, an actual internet link off the island, but we can at least communicate with our neighbors. Uh, now here, here's our final step in the plan though, is we're, uh, 
the city is going to be installing a dish network uh, down at the city hall, uh, the EOC, which of course the EOC has emergency power as well. Uh, so they'll be getting this internet, this dish network internet link at City Hall using this 900 megahertz link up to David's um, uh, PMBO here. Uh, the rest of us now will be able to route our messages all the way down through here, down to City Hall, get out through that dish link to the real internet. So we should never be able to, we should never have to be uh, out of communication as far as our email. Uh, communications is concerned. What's that? <laughs> well, if it goes down, it will probably be something worse than we can imagine. <laughs> um, and then, you know, we're, we have, now this really is a dream, is that we, we will eventually like to, to, to have HF Pactor uh, capabilities um, I don't know if this is way off in the future, but that is another option if, if, if the dish doesn't work. Um, and we have pretty good coverage right now. We have a number of hams that are very active on HF on the island that could participate in this. So that's just what I'm uh, Again, this is the, this is the uh, sort of presentation part of our slide that we give to our our uh, communication, our, our uh, uh, emergency coordination people, uh, just sort of explaining to them that we had to make a decision sooner or later, and now we finally decided it's been like. So that's basically it. Um, if you'd like to contact us for any more information, here's uh, Don Sandstrom is, is our, uh, our chairman, and David Giuliani, as I've mentioned a number of times, is basically the initiator of all our uh, communi digital communications uh, effort here. Um, so now I haven't talked much about the mechanics and the details of Winlink, so I'll be happy to answer any questions if there are any of those. Well, we like the, uh, the question is why are we using airmail? And if, I have I've looked at airmail and I found it actually a little confusing. Uh, I think that what we like most about Taplink is that it's a comfortable environment using win using the Windows email clients. So using Outlook or Outlook Express. Plus, there's there's no discernible difference when the internet link goes away. You send a message out, it still goes out like it usually did. So you don't have to have this extra piece of software for the users to have to understand and, and relearn whenever it comes to the point where they need it. And that's one of our situations, is, is that, or our criteria I should say, is that we want to keep this thing as simple for our, our members to use so that in an emergency they don't have to go back to a manual and figure out how to reconfigure something to, to work. Question is the expense of Pack for two or three? Uh, no, well, I'm using Pack for in just a general sense here. Yeah, if we do it, we'll probably probably do whatever is the best technology available at the time. But right now, it's just it's something on the back burner that we're considering. Yeah, the question is, is are there any other, is there any applications that talk WinLink for other operating system? Right. Yeah, and I don't know. I'm a Windows guy. Um, but of course, you know, if you've got a Mac, you can, you know, you can run Windows apps on a Mac. Um, um, but as far as like Linux and so forth, I would not be surprised if there are people out there, you know, writing, you know, compatible applications. But go to the Winlink site. I mean, they, they, they don't say anything. Oh, okay. 
about it. it but it'll, I'm sure it'll happen. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks very much.